If you'd asked me when I was 10 years of age what I wanted to be, a hurling maker was it. The first hurl I made would have been for, for myself and my wife Patrice. Um, I suppose, look, she was uh, playing Kamogi for Warford at the time and uh, I was just making a few hurlies for her. In 2006 then we just said we'd, we'd uh, give it a go and try and make a business out of it full time, you know. So we, we, we did and touch wood, it's, it's going okay, thank God. Patrice would look after the, the sales and all that, along with my father over in the workshop. And two little children as well, uh, JJ and Katie, have come along over the last couple of years. And, uh, you know, please God, uh, I'd like to, you know, pass on the, the craft and the tradition to them to keep in the family and, and, and that, you know. So hopefully, look, they'll, they'll, they'll know how to make a hurley anyway. And after that, then they can uh, find their own path in life. Probably the biggest buzz for me is the fact that you know, the hurdies are made in the back of the couch and knock and duff. And, and when you see them then up in Turles and Crow Park, like I, I get a wick of buzz off that. You know, you wouldn't be jumping up and down shouting it, but just you'll be sitting in the stand in Turles or Crow Park and you, inside you'd just be happy. You know what I mean? It's just, it, it sort of makes all the hard work worthwhile. Like. The way I look at it is, is that uh, they played hurling hundreds of years ago with, a, with, a, with an Ash Hurley and they're still playing with it. And uh, thank God, look, they are, and that suits me down to the ground. I'll keep making them by hand, please God, as long as the shoulders hold up.